Hey, how you doing? Justin here for a beginner's lesson on sus chords. Just having a little cuddle with my dog. I just filmed this whole lesson and forgot to turn the camera on. I hate it when I do that. I think Ziggy realised I was getting a bit upset, so he came over to say hello. Okay, you need to go back to your basket though now. I've got to do a guitar lesson. Go on, off you go. Back to bed. Go on, bedtime. Sus is short for suspended. And suspended, it doesn't really mean this, but you can think of it as meaning take away the third and replace with. Now, that will only make sense if you've done a little bit of music theory before. The general idea with chords are they're made up, a major chord is made up of the first, third, and fifth degree of a major scale. Now, if we talk about, say, D major, which is one of the chords that we're going to be checking out today, the notes in a D major scale are D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, and D. If we want to know the notes in a D chord, it would be the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of the D major scale, which was the note D, F sharp, and A. Let's start by having a look at our D chord here. Now, we're not playing the thickest two strings. We've got the open D, which is obviously the root. Here, the first finger is on the note A, which is the fifth note of the D major scale. Third finger here is down on a note D, again, a doubling octave there and the last note thinner string is the note F sharp and this is the third note of the D major scale. The third note of the D major scale you might remember is the one that we can flatten by one semitone and it becomes a minor chord so we've got major and minor. This third degree of the scale is pretty powerful to make it either major or minor but if we take it away Remember, suspended means take away the third and replace with. If we take it away, it's not major or minor. It's got a very different kind of character to it. So let's explore sus2. Second note of the D major scale was the note E, conveniently located as an open E string. Here's your D chord. If we just lift off second finger, we've got D sus2. Now we've also got D sus4, take away the third and replace with the fourth. D, E, F sharp, G is the fourth note. G conveniently located here with a little finger, third fret thinner string. And together, they're both variations that we can use as replacements for the D chord. We can use them as kind of ornaments and just use them sparingly, or they can actually become part of a kind of a melodic riff. So we can have like a... Or something like... The first thing I would recommend you do is experiment with the major chords, just like I've been doing there with the D. But remember, because sus chords are not major or minor, you can also use them with the minor chord. So if we go here from a D minor, lift off the first finger, there is a D sus2, D minor, D sus4, D minor. Very, very cool little sound this indeed. Let's move over and check out how to do it on the A chord. So here's a regular A chord. This note is the third of the chord. You can tell because it's the one that we use to change between major and minor. Okay, if we move it down a tone, we get A sus2, beautiful sounding chord. Now note that I've just changed the fingering here. If you were using it as an ornament, you'd probably stick with fingers one and two in that order, but if you're just playing it on its own, it really doesn't matter what fingers you use to play that chord. Just if you're doing... Probably you're going to be playing it with those fingers. It really doesn't make any difference, so up to you. There's A. Little finger down here. There's your A sus4. That was the third raised at one semitone. Up 
I must admit, I was kind of anticipating sus chords being pretty easy. I didn't think anyone would have any problems with them. But when Nitsudge had a go at it, man, found out it was loads harder. I had all of these delusions of teaching you guys how to do fancy ornaments and hammer-ons and flick-offs and stuff, but actually they can be pretty tricky. So if you're struggling here, if you're like, what the hell does my finger do that? It keeps going back on the wrong string and that kind of thing. That's dead normal. It's just going to take a little bit of practice. It does come quicker than you might anticipate, but definitely uh, Nitsudge really found the, the early days of this stuff pretty heavy duty. Let's just have a look at some E chords and then I'm going to give you some exercises. So here is an E chord. Now, the note that changes from major to minor here is the first finger, so it lifts it off. So playing a sus2 would involve like moving the minor note back another one to here, and we can't really get past the nut. <laughs> There's not a backwards fret. So playing an E sus2 is not possible in the open position. Oh, it kind of is, but it's a lot more complicated and we're not going to go into doing that just now. But adding a little finger down here on the uh, second fret of the third string is a fantastic move. Also works with the minor, of course. But just remember, there's no easy sus2 grip on the E chord. As I mentioned a couple of times already, sus chords can be used as ornaments or embellishments where you'd use just one of the sus chords or more, and you just kind of add them on and off to add some interest to a chord that you're playing, particularly when you're stuck on one chord for a length of time. Or they can be used as kind of part of a riff, like Summer of 69, that kind of thing, where, or Paint It Black, where it actually it forms part of the melody within the chords, and both are quite valid. Now, for your practice, I'd recommend spending a bit of time at the beginning just mucking around with it. So playing a D chord, adding the sus2, adding the sus4, doing it for the A chord, adding the sus4 for the E chord. Just experiment a little bit. Get used to what it feels like. It's not quite as easy as I had hoped, and you might find the same, or you might find it super easy straight away if you've been playing a little while, and maybe this isn't your first go at doing this kind of thing. But just experiment. Have a, have a bit of a play around and see what you come up with. But I'm going to give you three exercises as well that I think are worth practicing specifically just because they make a nice combination of the sus chords and combining it with a strumming pattern, and they're very usable little elements. Now, the very first part, I'll do it on the D chord first of all. We'd strum down, 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 up, down, up, down. So we've got one, two, third down strum, then on the next up strum, we add little finger down, take it off for the next down strum, and then the and after four, we're lifting off the second finger to get the D sus two. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. There's quite a few advantages with this idea. The sus chord being on the thinner strings goes really nicely with the up picks because you're really accenting those sus chords. You could do any variation of this. You could do the sus first, you could do only sus four, like a... Or only sus two. I've started doing variations already. It, just explore it. It's a starting point, something to have a bit of a go at. The second exercise I'd recommend you checking out is adding the sus four on the up strums in Old Faithful. So Old Faithful, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, up, down. So having down, down, sus four. Now, this is just an exercise. You can muck around with it any way you want. It doesn't have to be set. I'm just trying to give you some starting points to see the way that the, the, the sus chords work well as ornaments and as something that you can incorporate with the strumming patterns. They, they are mostly better when they're on the upstrokes. They don't have to be, for sure, but because you're accenting those thinner strings, it kind of highlights the melodic element of them. That said, this last pattern I'm going to share with you has the sus4 placed on the beat. So we'd have for the D chord, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three, and four. So down on the B 
Beat two and the sas, then off for the up. Down, up, down, one, two and three and four. One, two and three and four. Two and three and four. One. I think experimenting is definitely the key thing here, but now that you're aware of them as well, you'll start to recognize them when you're listening to songs. Uh, there's some fantastic examples, particularly kind of 90s rock guys, the acoustic ballads in uh, Dead or Alive and those kind of things do a really nice line of sus twiddles, particularly on the D chords, these like... Where you've got a... That's a hammer on with the little finger, flick off, flick off with the second finger. Now, those things are not easy, you know, for a beginner that's, you know, Nitsudge had a go at doing those and was like, well, <laughs> are you kidding me? So those things you're going to find pretty difficult, but stay aware of them. Keep your ears open to them. You'll start to hear them in songs maybe that you've been playing already that you can start adding them in. But as well, you shouldn't be afraid of just trying them out in songs that you already know and seeing what you come up with. There really is no limit here. I really hope you have a lot of fun with these sus chords. If you happen to be over on YouTube, please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate the support. Let me know in the comments, of course, how you're getting on with all of this stuff. Always love to hear how you're doing. I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. You know, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.